This your boy Tui the DJ. Welcome to Truth Be Told. I am your official DJ. This is where the truth, you'll find it out. Let's go. To the Truth Be Told show, I'm on Coach uh, Disco. This is my host, Nikki Milton, and my other host for the day is Alicia Wynn. Um, last week we did a topic on Little League football, and it went very, very well. Um, I got numerous of phone calls from the parents, and they were very excited about things that we uh, told them and gave them a little education. A lot of stuff I didn't touch that I should have, I could have went on and on. But this past week, I seen a very uh, touching subject. Um, some of the coaches that's no longer in the playoffs came to watch the other pounds play um, at the same part they coach at. Okay. And they made them pay to get in the game. Now these coaches volunteer their time 12 hours a week, spend their gas money for free, mm -hmm. and they still made them pay to get in. So like I was saying, it costs too much, too much money for these kids to stay out of trouble, and these single parents and homes, it costs too much money for it. Yeah. Um, but back on that note, uh, change the subject a little bit. Okay. We're gonna have a very, very exciting subject today. <laughs> and it's for yeah. the ladies. I'm a little outnumbered, but we're gonna go make it uh, do what it do. Uh, the subject is, the title is, are you a single woman by <laughs> choice, or did you lose a good man? Why are you looking over here? I'm just looking that way. Okay. And if you are not single, what are you doing differently now that you have a man you did when you were single? So we're going to touch some subjects, going to hit a couple nerves here and there, so hey, be ready for it, all right? My first question is, uh, are you a single woman because your expectations may be a little too high? Uh, no. My expectations, I don't think, is um, is high at all. I do think that I have the right to choose my mate I'm going to be with the rest of my life and not have to settle for any mess. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> mess, mess being made of what? Because women bring mess to the table, too. Right, right. So right, in right, the, right. We, we, we both got our love here and there, you know, so what mess you talking about? Mess like, you know... Baby mama drama, drama period, can't keep a job drama, okay. family drama, just and then bring all that mess to a person that's drama free. So okay. when I say mess, it's just messy. Even like we were having a conversation about someone, you know, asking about a particular person, this guy doesn't even file taxes. So what can you do with that? I got you. Nothing. So basically you got to have some kind of income. <laughs> Something. Coming. You got to be able to cover the bill here and there somewhat. Somewhere. Even if it's a $5 little season down the street piece. <laughs> Gainfully employed is okay with I got you. I right. got you. Okay, now you. Uh, engaged. Um, did you ever bring your expectations down for a man to be engaged? Or you just say, you know what? It is what it is. These kind of men is out there. Or did you just find that good man in your, and you good right now? I feel like I just found that good man. I don't feel like I brought my expectations down at all because even though we all have different things that we bring to the table, he brought a lot to the table that I was looking for at the time, and I didn't even I wasn't even looking for a relationship. Okay, good, good, I good. just fell in the place. Okay, good. good. It was like you say, sometimes you find them when you ain't looking for them. Exactly. Exactly. And so you know. Uh, oh, okay. My next question is uh, for you, being engaged, hard day at work. Tired, feet hurt, aggravated from your co-worker. <laughs> How does it feel to come home to a man that's there for you to comfort you? It feels wonderful because I have a man that I will come home and dinner be ready. Oh, my love. Okay. Or the kids be ready for bed okay. and I don't have to do anything but sit there. Okay. Does he have a brother? <laughs> <laughs> now you, Miss Nikki, uh -uh. same question. And you, you on the other side, you okay. hard, you know, you hard day at work. I work hard. Stressed out. Your cousin called you 30 times, aggravated you. Yes, yes. You know, now you come home to an empty household. It's just you. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. how do you, how do you deal with your, got to get your emotions out and need somebody to talk to? Does it bother you or, I mean? No, well, bother me not at all. Um, it's more so, it's just. Just like coming to a house and, and you're walking into a door of an unhappy home. You're still going to have that same feeling. Uh, if you are stressed, you still won't have anybody to talk to, although you have somebody there because y'all not communicating and it's real bitter in the household. For me, when I come home after a stressful day, um, when I cross that threshold, it's about me and my peace that I enter into. I do have friends in my life, so if I do need to call somebody, I can call family, I can call close friends. I can talk about whatever. Um, I don't always
always need the comfort of a man. I pray, ask God to release me of those things. So it's different ways that that I can actually, um, you know, get those feelings and emotions out of me. As well as, although I'm not in a relationship, there are times that I may be lonely, but I'm never alone because of the support that I have. So. Uh, the, the, the man, for me, to speak on the man we have, for both of y'all, um, I feel like, you know, hanging at the barbershops, I used to be single at one time in my life. Um, we come home to, we'll leave work and come home to a most stressful situation. So what I'm getting at is there's a lot of bitter women out there that we come home, we bitter too because we know we're going to get ready to deal with. You know, maybe we, not, maybe we forgot to pick up some on the way. We know she ain't going to get in the car, ain't going to pick it up. It's going to be like, you forgot to take care of this. You forgot to do that. So we come on the stuff too. Right. So um, my point is, it's a good way that both of y'all have that you feel towards, you know, coming home. But you're not going to come home every day to a cook no. meal, okay? And you're not going to come over every day to find peace because it may be something, something else waiting for you, a phone call or something right. that may throw you off. Right. And being that said is, I don't understand how so many single women out there. I do. Mm -hmm. And I will talk about it a little later, but I know why. And I know why <laughs> so women married. Um, okay. um, you know, so my whole point is, you know, growing up, we all grew up in a household. Mm -hmm. And we all know grandmama, auntie, mm -hmm. mama. Mama always wanted you to have that quote unquote good husband, right. white picket fence, kids playing, the wonderful world. Right. Okay. You, not having that right now in your life, do you? Do you feel like it's not gonna come, or are you just content on being single until it? I mean, how you how you deal with it? How do I deal with it? Um, well, first off, I grew up with my father raised me. So one time, shout out to my dad. So I don't lack a, a, a man figure, a father figure. Uh -huh. I don't have to just be with the man for the sake of being with the man. Um, do I think that it's gonna come? Absolutely. Okay. I put myself in position, meaning, you know, I, I'm, I am an independent woman. However, I do understand once I'm joined with that man who's designed and designated for me, me, that um, I, I know how to integrate my life with his life so that it is successful. But right now, I mean, I'm not pressed. I'm, I'm good. I, I, I live my life. I love the life that I have. And do you have, I mean, because being married don't mean you got the white picket fence. And don't mean that you come home stress right. free. So I grew up at home with two parents, and okay. there was very not many happy days. So okay. I understand, you know, even being in a relationship, all days aren't happy. Right. right. But that's when you, as a person, have to learn to communicate with your better half right. and work through the issues. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I feel if you can work through your stress-free issues, then that's the person that's supposed to be you're supposed to be with. Like I said, work with. <laughs> that's right. Not with. fight against. Not fight right. against. Okay. Well, like I said, I'm gonna get my part, and when I get my part, I'm gonna make cut the tube. I don't know what they may do. I'm gonna say what I got to say. <laughs> Just don't hit me at the same time. Okay. Okay. Um. A lot of times, we it's a myth out there. When you single, you do a little more to get that man. Okay, but it's a myth that once you get married, a lot of that stuff stop. What do you do, being engaged, to not stop doing what you did to get that man? How would you make sure that you continue with the job, with the kids, still have time to do that for that man? I just try to, whenever I get a minute or a chance, or whenever we're kid free, and we just have a minute to ourselves, I always try to keep the excitement up, whether it be... We do something, take a ride in the car, or spice up the house, gotcha. lay some flowers out, some chocolate, <laughs> a cup of wine, hey, you know, hey, hey. get your relation on. Exactly. <laughs> when you don't have work, you don't have kids, even when you, when you only have a few minutes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Smack them on the back, give them a kiss on the oh, cheek, Lord. you know, just flirt with them a little bit. You have to keep the excitement up. True. True. You have and, to keep the excitement and, up. And for you, I mean... Um, yeah, you can say that. You're a single woman, okay? Okay. For you, I, I just don't understand. Like I said, uh, I understand, but we all can see that you're a beautiful woman. So, you know, uh, being single, how would you transpire being single? Now, all of a sudden, I got a, I got a fiance, I got a husband. Now, I ain't no more coming home, keep your shoes off, and baby, watch something go straight to sleep. 
How would you deal with that? How would I deal with that? Um, just more so, I think that person that's for me and that that I'm with will have a friendship starting. That'll be our foundation, so that we know each other. I know if he just need a minute, him if he needs some me time, vice versa. Knowing, okay, hey, this is not a good time, and or this is a good time. So. Getting with him, understanding his likes, his dislikes, and also too for myself, so I, so we won't butt heads so much, okay. and so that when we do come together, it, it's good, okay. it's good, and oh. also keeping that up, not just during the dating, during the courtship, but keeping it up, you know, you. and even, you know, like she said, spicing it up, you know, to get your, you know, your. See, but see the thing about <laughs> this, this, this thing about, like I said, I talk barbershop talk, I got a lot of barbers. See, all right, this what I, this what I, this what I don't understand. Y'all say y'all have to spice it up, mm -hmm. but let a married man do something out the way. Like, she come home from work, and you got candles lit, you got some music playing, something that you ain't did in a long time. The first thing we get accused of, of being guilty of something. What <laughs> yeah. you done did? Uh, oh, this here. Who you done tried that with? So, what I'm getting at is, I'm going to get to why I think of so many single women. So, like I said, don't hit it with the right or left, but when we come back, we'll get to more questions. We'll see you two and two. So we had a good conversation so far. Yeah. Uh, topic again is uh, single ladies. Are you single by choice? And did you want to be a good man? Um, and if you are married, what made you uh, find that good man? What made you become one? Uh, my next uh, topic is... Uh, wait, 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 wait. We have to finish with being married. You trying to spice up your life. Spice yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. Mean, Don't jump that. Oh, uh, I ain't going to jump it. I mean, because like I said, we do barber talk. We do barber shop talk. And, and, you know, it's part of the, it's part of the relationship. Sometimes, sometimes you try to get a little advanced and do a little something different. You don't heard about your homeboy doing it or whatever. You know? <laughs> and sometimes you get accused of what you did, and, and so sometimes it makes you stop wanting to do it. So, like I said, I'm going to talk about why I think of some single women because some of that stuff can push a man away. All right. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. So back on what you just said, <laughs> as far I, I, I as the know. candles, the uh -huh. this and the that, and then your. You know, your significant other comes home and like, you know, who you tried that with? Are you trying to say that, you know, she, you are you are making up for something? That no, you did? no. Or what why? I'm saying is, you know, a lot of times we, t we tired as men. We got our own, we, we have feelings too. Okay, we go through stuff too. So, some, we, y'all want it. Y'all want it every Friday. I want the candles, y'all want the music. You know, so sometimes we just tired and we just had the same mistakes y'all made. We, do all that when we first start dating and we get away from it because we get comfortable. Right. But then we finally figure out, you know what, man, let me go and do something good for my wife, man, because if not, she gonna, you know, but even when you finally do that, it's a catch-22. So a lot of guys, 
I feel like. Don't make that extra effort because it, believe it or not, it causes a red flag to somebody when you're trying to do something right. But then that'll deal with that person having insecurities, especially mm -hmm. if you know you're being a yeah. that upright man mm -hmm. to your wife and you haven't stepped out. So she got issues. Yeah. You're right, but you're right. You're up. right, but as, as, like I said, as men we talk, a lot of times a man come home and be rolling his pedal. We wonder, hey, what's what what's going on? What you, what you, what you done did? You know what I'm saying? So it go it go no way. It ain't it ain't really insecurity. It's just part of life. I mean, you. I'm not, I'm not saying it's right. It's right on both parts. But what I'm saying is, in a lot of relationships, you can't be spontaneous because if you are, because of the the, the world we live in. Mm -mm. Okay. I have to make the difference because if I'm in a relationship with somebody. And I come in the house, or he tells me to meet him here or there. After four months, meaning he did it one day on Friday, and didn't do it again until a year later. It, it doesn't matter. It don't go no, it don't show, okay. It, not for me, because right. I'm like, well, that's cool, that's you. Look at my boo. Okay. You know, yeah. he's showing me a little love, and vice versa, where I'll show him that, but I don't expect his response to be, what you been doing? What you been doing? No, I expect him to just come on in and let it happen. Yeah, exactly. I, <laughs> like I said, let him, okay, okay, I'll tell you what, how about this? Do you feel, this is how I feel, do you feel like a lot of women out there hold grudges on other men because of what they've been through? Because, I'm going to tell you right now, I can understand why some of these single women because there's a lot of nasty women out there as far as <laughs> attitudes. I can go to a racetrack, I can go to a Kroger's, I can go somewhere open up a door for 10 ladies. And I guarantee you, I get one thank you. Yeah. All right, and the real pretty ones, they're the ones too cute to even open their mouth. Yeah, yeah. The ugly yeah. ones look at you and frown their face. <laughs> the only time I see a woman happy is when she comes from the ATM <laughs> or she just pay for her groceries because she got her own money. So I can understand why there's so many single women out there. Because it's, like, it's, like, it's, it's a lot of bitter women out there. No, 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 no. So speaking of what I just said, okay, do you think, I know the answer, but do you think there's a lot of women out there who hold grudges from their past? Baby daddy, or you met Leroy at the club and he treated like trash. I mean, you talk to me, let, let tell me, do you think, honestly, do women hold a lot of grudges on their past to that good man that's in their life? Honestly, I do. I do think some women hold grudges on past relationships and they can't move from it. They feel like, oh, the next dude just gonna do the same thing he did or something gonna happen and it's gonna end up in the same path that the last relationship with. And I also think a lot of women in relationships where they just looking for something that they want. Okay. Whether it be money, car, a house, a couple of clothes here, a couple of clothes there. I do feel like a lot of women into relationships for the wrong reasons. I, you know what? Do yeah. it all the time. I have to uh, uh, do, yeah. do you hold grudges on anything in the past? No, but what I, I'm going to, I have to just, you know, co sign on what she just said. You do have a lot of um, women that hold grudges. Those are called women with baggage. Bag mm -hmm. lady. Yeah. You better pack light, okay? If you want to have somebody. And the other ones you said just in it for what they want, those are called sack chasers, <laughs> okay? Sack chasers, <laughs> gold diggers, uh, oh, 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 tell me, tell me, tell me. <laughs> what's, what's the difference between a gold digger, uh -huh. okay, okay, and a man that don't have his own? Because you say you want somebody to 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 wine you and do this and do that. Now, if you out for that kind of man, no. then he got that means no, you gotta have some money. No, no. So when you say gold digger. What you mean gold digger? Gold digger meaning, and, and, and it, I'm gonna use this lightly because with gold digger, I'm just saying more so a woman who's only dating a man because of what he has. That. So, so of course she's not gonna date a dude with a mod bus pass. She wants somebody okay, that got stop, a car. Stop. What's wrong with that? Well, I'm about, what, what, if that man, what, what if that man just went through a divorce and lost everything and he trying to get back on? But you ain't gave that man the time of day because you rolled by and see him at the bus stop and he he may be the, a good looking brother, but since he at the bus stop, he may be doing gas high. <laughs> he may be catching the bus saying gas. I know when I went to uh, Atlanta, mm -hmm. when I first moved here, I caught a bus everywhere. I'm talking about downtown because of traffic. I ain't know where I was going. Right, right, right. Now, you gonna tell me I'm, I ain't a man because I'm catching the bus? It's funny women catch the bus. Yeah. Well, we no, had, look, we so bad. They had a little briefcase and had a little uh, Holly Berry outfit on. They on the bus. <laughs> but see, that's that's a difference. We're talking about a, a but different. But guess what? A man is still trying to talk to them. But look, bus or no bus. Listen. That's a Five different. That's a different quality in women. That's what I'm saying. So that's not to say. Cause we'll talk, we'll talk to a woman that catch a bus. If she fine, she fine. Y'all see a fine man that catch the bus? Oh, he ain't the one. No, you kept some women. He could be doing a job in the CEO building on the fifth floor. That's some women. That's how they miss out. Exactly. That's that's some women. So 
you have to have a conversation with a person, exactly. see what person that. Exactly. Uh, to me, a woman who has good judgment of character in a man, she's going to look, she's going to observe him head to toe, mm -hmm. listen to his conversation. So yes, if he is catching the train or if he is on the, the bus or whatever, after this conversation that she's had with him, she knows he's either about his business or he's just. But how would he get that whatever. conversation if he on the bus and y'all saying y'all ain't gonna pay him no attention? I didn't say I wasn't paying no attention. You said so right it. Now, <laughs> so right now, so right now, right now, if Idris Elba, uh, whoever was on the bus stop, the, the hottest whatever dude y'all like now was at the bus stop. Dude, not, I can't I scratch that. If a dude look like him, all right, and you know it ain't him, but y'all fascinated with this dude and y'all see him on TV, and y'all see a dude look just like him, but he at the bus stop. Y'all see him on TV. Y'all see the same person on TV. Oh, he fine. He this. He that. But since that man catches the bus, soon you keep on riding. You matter of fact, you trying to beat the light, so you won't get stopped. No. But how? That's how's he so gonna stop so you at a bus stop right? anyway? Just like he stopped at the mall. Come here. Look, come here. He might wear your car. Nobody's driving you. around, pausing that bus stop. Like, <laughs> well, look, like, you want to talk to me? Well, no. Back, back to my next subject. I, I know we're gonna keep this long. It's, it's good. But, but, but wait. Good. Wait. Before well, we go to the next question. I lived in New York, and what we do in New York is catch the subways, catch the buses. So, therefore, that's what I say, it depends on that woman in that conversation. Exactly. Of course, unless this woman's in a gas station and or she's walking down the street, that's the way she's going to be able to okay. meet this start, guy. Start right now. Speaking about where you live at. Okay. okay. And by the way, before the rumors get out, this is my first cousin. Because I already got texted that I'm sleeping with this woman. No, <laughs> no. We don't do anything. Okay. Listen to me. <laughs> by the way, because speaking of what, you, what you're talking about, we born and raised in Miami. Right. Okay. Back then, candy paint, Chevys, you love that. Okay. Oh, yeah. High school. It's still hot okay. now. Okay. So what's the difference, <laughs> what's the difference between that man looking good at the light, red light in the Chevy with candy paint rims and one in a convertible Benz? Is there a different one that you approach differently? No. For me, no. I say no. No. So fine is fine, y'all. Fine is no fine. No man catching the bus. No, no. no. <laughs> He's catching the bus. He's catching the bus. It's not about the bus. It's not about it's the about car. What, it's okay. about, the, get off it's about the guy in the character. Okay, because being, being with you, Miss Nikki, um, okay. you know, uh, when you do get married, okay. um, right now you're free. Right. Okay, you come and go as you want to. You okay. do what you want to do. You got nobody to answer to. Absolutely. Okay? Is there a different way of y'all handle this? I mean, you can, get in the, you can get in your car and not go to the mall and not say nothing. Right. You jump up. Do you have to say, baby, can I, or should I, or would you go? How do you have, I mean, what's the difference between that point of, can you still have a life and be married with them, actually? Yes, yeah. you can still have a life and be married. I don't feel like it's, baby, can I go here, baby, can I do this, baby, can I do that, but at least communicate and let me know so I can know what I need to do with my schedule, you know what I'm saying? If we're going to do something together today, or you're going to go do your thing, let me know. So we can work it out. So how would you deal with it? Now you, now, now look, now you've been doing, you know, you're getting up when you want to do it. So is you going to still, are you, are you still going to be the same person? Are you still going to say, no. you know what, I'm gone, look home, I'm gone, I get out, I get back. I see, no, 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 no. Um, communication is key. Right. Even being single, uh, when I meet somebody, I like to communicate because that's how, that's the way you know a person in their patterns. I got you. So even when I am uh, married, I understand I'm going to have to communicate with this person to either you know, let him know where I'm going, see if he had plans for us, if he wants to join me, or what he's going to do, so everybody knows, everybody's accounted for. It's kind of like a... Do you think you can exactly. use it? You know what I'm saying, but do you think Especially you can use it? Especially the way things are nowadays. Yeah. But you know can, can you get used you to that? Yeah. Can you get used to that? Yes, I can. So right now you get off your couch when you want to, put your shoes on, right. and you just walk straight out of them. Oh, now so you mean tell me you can, now you can get used to stopping, turning, sweetheart, I'm going down the street, uh, do you mind, you want anything, you can get used to that, right, that lifestyle? Well, you got to remember that I haven't been single all this time. I've only been single for a short period of time. And I've been in a relationship about six and a half, seven years to where it was like a marriage and understanding, again, communicating with that person. So it's not like I've just been single my entire life straight out the door. And for whatever reason, though, they don't let them meet cousin because of disco. They, they, keep they discriminate. <laughs> so. My male cousins discriminate. They don't like nobody. Nobody's good enough for us. So <laughs> that's why. I'm going to do like my other cousin. Get married and tell y'all about it later. Okay. <laughs> but I, I feel like, like she said, it's a part of communication. If you're with somebody every day and you just up and go out the door, what if you don't come back for two days? Right. They're not going to know where you at. Right. So it's just a common courtesy. So it's okay. They so so it's not, it's not, you, 
it's just not you, the sheriff, and I'm the, I'm the. Uh, no, no, okay. no, 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 because that that can drive a person away. A person get tired of where you going, where you been, let me tell you, what you doing. Yeah, who does that? Oh well, oh, well it, does, it, it happens. happens. <laughs> it happens. But, it does happen. but but who does that though? Who can stay in a stress free, drama free relationship with somebody like a hound dog? Let me smell. Let me smell. What, 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 what? I'm, relax. I'm gonna need you to relax and let's just enjoy life. Let's enjoy this relationship because after a while, that person gonna get tired and deuce them out because there's only so much anybody can take a male or a female you know in a relationship but again that falls back on what we talked about earlier insecurities that person didn't deal with prior relationships before getting into this relationship so they're gonna need to do some cleansing because if not they're gonna run that man or that that woman so 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 right now that being the last question of the topic that answered the question okay that's well, well, that's your answer. <laughs> what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you my answer why I think so many single women like that. And y'all can slap me, punch me, what they going to do. I feel like, and I feel for my heart, okay? And, oh, I, and, yeah. my, and my next guest, matter of fact, the guest of the day is uh, King Marlo. He'll be on here after the <laughs> Now keep going. My next guest is actually King Marlo, and I guarantee you I'm outnumbered right now. But I'm going to tell you why I think there's so many single women out there. And my first thing is, it's too many hard-headed, stubborn, <laughs> want to have their own way. And see, a woman want a man, but when they get a man, they got to still want to be the boss. Yeah. So what yeah, you, so what, so, so, yeah. so what am I here for if you want to be the boss? Right. Okay, a lot of women, like I said, you can't speak to a fine woman. Mm -hmm. You say hello to a fine woman, oh, you got to be hollering at her. You can't be Mr. Nice Man all the time. Mm -hmm. All right, and then you got to compete with the cat down the street. Because you still got women that want to be women, but they're young. My whole point is a lot of women expectations are too high. I don't know if God made some of the women if he I don't know if God made some of these men and women looking for. I don't know if he out there. Like I said, a man is when a man like a woman, he is quick to look past her flaws. Right. Because one thing we talk about as a man, if you know what you got and you know her problems, you can deal with it. Right. You leave her, right. Right. you might meet old crazy fool down the street that got more problems than she do. Right. So we but that's us. Right. Y'all Y'all be the man with a couple problems? Oh, he got to go. He got to go. So that's my reason why I feel like it's so many single women out there. Okay, look, I'm going to have to agree with you on that one about looking past the flaws and stuff. It's the difference between a flaw and a red flag. If the first two days you've met this man, had a conversation, he's already talking about having kids, let's get married, move in, that's a red flag. He you know? love. He love who? He don't know. Okay, so don't women say, I knew I had my mate when I seen him in the first time. They're lying, they're lying. That's a lie. So you ain't never seen, so you been telling an old woman, because I hear all the time, I knew he was the one for me when I first seen him. I mean, I seen him. I mean, I thought he was the one for me. I still feel he the one for me. He's the one for me. I've seen Tyrese. I've seen other guys. And guess what? They're not for me, but it's just because I like what's on the exterior. I like what's on the outside. But now we are ideas now. So we are dealing with it. I mean, it's vice versa. Y'all look and y'all like, ooh, ooh, ooh. But well, I think, I think a lot of men, and it's truthfully, I think a lot of men, if we all had the same standards, I think women are, are carrying themselves different. Vice versa. I think if women had the same standards, all men would carry themselves different. Yeah. So it goes both ways. Right. But single women, I don't think it's single women by choice. I think it's single women because they have not met that right one because of their expectations. Or, uh, 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 or, clean it up. Or, I'm gonna clean up a little bit. <laughs> I'm gonna clean up a little bit because, I, like I said, I think the flaws is not looked over. It's not, okay, he got that little bitty flaw, I can deal with that. So, like I said, my biggest deal is I can't stand a woman with an attitude. Y'all gonna have attitude here and there, but I can't stand to see, especially a good looking woman. Mm -hmm. You know, you say, hey, how you doing? And just mad at the world for what reason? Mm -hmm. I want y'all to do something. Y'all go to the mall, <laughs> and I want y'all to sit down with a piece of paper, and I guarantee you, you look at 30 women, and I guarantee you, 25 will walk around looking pissed off at the world. You sounding bitter. Uh, you know, know. Listen, you bitter. I'm not mean, bitter, I'm just being real. I mean, a woman will smile, but then at the same time, somebody may be a phony smile. Yeah. I just, like I said, the topic of the day was single women. Now, I don't feel like a woman should be pushed into a relationship right. if she's not ready for one. Right. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe a woman really, really single by choice. I feel like she has an application or she has a criteria. She just has not met yet. So I'm going to rephrase by choice. It's just not okay, I can agree with that. Okay. I can agree with so, that. So can I? Because, again, I'm not single because, oh, I just can't get anybody. It's just the men that I have been meeting, it's not what I am looking for. It's not for me. Now, he may be for the next woman that's 
two rolls back, but, but he's not for me. But my whole thing about it, I don't want to. I don't want to say how old y'all, because we know we do it. <laughs> but it what, doesn't matter. I mean, do you? How much long are you giving yourself? Do you think? Do you, think do you think? Do you think of the age limit to be, be married? No, 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 no. To get no, married, no. you can't enjoy it. At a certain age, you can't enjoy each other. Now, you can't come in at 65, 66 years old. Oh. So, it's going to be a little That's something. Well, no, I don't feel like it's a little bit. I feel like it's a little bit. Both of y'all have a heart attack in there. Go ahead. I feel like it's a little bit. You're not settling for something that you know that's not for you. Right. There's right. no limit. But, like I said, I feel like men, we can settle for something and try to make it work. But, see, that's the problem. That's the problem. And then you want to not making it work. Yeah. We want to be unhappily married with all these extra things. It's no, what I'm, what I'm saying is we can see a flaw and say, you know what? But that's not settling. That's saying, okay, you know, you right. got this flaw. That's fine. I still like you as the person you are. Right. I still love you as the person you are. Your flaw doesn't matter. Right. So y'all so y'all saying you can love a mistake? What you, of what course you can love a mistake. But what do you say? Like, so you can love a mistake? You? No, wait, wait, wait. So are you talking about those uh, single husbands? That kind of mistake? I'm talking about can you love a mistake? Meaning can you love somebody you say, you know, I thought it was going to get better, but it didn't get better? Or can you love, or, or or can you can a woman ever agree to the fact that maybe it was her fault? Yeah, it, well, it, it depends never on that woman. It, it never happened. It depends on that woman, though. I, it will never happen. It depends on that it woman. Does. You go to court right now, and you I guarantee you. You have to be woman you, enough to say, you know what? Like I said, it wasn't all him. It was I guarantee him. you, a woman ain't gonna go to court right now. Say a woman got two kids, mm -hmm. one kid. She not gonna go to court and say, Your Honor, you know what? It was on me. So. He can have a hot. They ain't doing none of that. It's gonna be <laughs> okay, I was crying yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he didn't call me and I thought he was cheating on his ex my I mean, He just all that kind of stuff. Ain't no woman gonna sit and say it's her fault because no, that's what? not true. Because you have you have different caliber of women. You and have you. irresponsible women and you have responsible. Now women. I do agree that you got women that can say I wasn't ready to be married yet. Right. And so I wasn't ready to be a wife. I was. Wrong. I agree with that. Yeah. But I think, like I said, the women to me personally, the women that got all the friends, them all the problems come. What you mean? Yeah, oh, when you're married and you got a whole bunch of single women, friends, yeah, you can't get a phone call, you getting it, let's go, you can't do it out of respect of your husband. And not only that, you can't get but advice someone, someone they can't that. relate to you. They're, they ain't in a relationship. How are they going to relate to what's going on with you in your True. relationship? So True. I think that's what a lot of women do go wrong too. They communicate with their girls, friends, and ain't got a man, ain't had a man in a long time. And then you share with them what's exactly. happening in your house, your bed. Exactly. Exactly. I, I wouldn't take that girl. I would leave. You know what? She's sitting at home by herself. She's sitting on the first floor, yeah, and she's trying to take it. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and end a little bit. Uh, what I want you to uh, for all the single women out there, I want you to give them some advice on what to do to make themselves even you know happier every day, and give them a little advice on what you're doing because you're very happy, very cheerful, and of course very beautiful. So, um, you know, give them give them the closing remarks, cause I'm gonna give you mine. Oh gosh. <laughs> Just you have to love yourself first before you can love anybody. You have to be content with being by yourself before you can be with anybody. You have to know yourself before you can be with anybody. And again, just uh, loving you is so, so important because if you don't love yourself, how can you get with someone involved in a commitment as well as a relationship and love this man genuinely? You can give him parts of it, but if you're still carrying baggage around, if you're scarred, if you have residue on you from previous relationships, you got to loosen and let it go before you can be anything to anybody else. So that's my, that's my thing. And you being a single woman for uh, quite a while, now you um, about to be a married woman, um, been engaged since I've known you for a couple of years. Um, what advice can you give a woman that's out there that's probably just looking too far, looking for too much and that's why they pretty much. I mean, what 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 made you go from not being single to being engaged? What what made it happen? I think I did exactly what Miss Nikki said. She said you have to love yourself and look for your find yourself first before you can find somebody else. Because once you find yourself, when that person comes along, you're able to realize and realize, you know, I can, you know, we can do this together. Because being in a relationship is not about yourself. It's about the communication and the marriage between two people. It's about mm -hmm. working together and being one as two. Okay, well I appreciate both of y'all joining me today. Um, my last final thoughts is uh keep it clean. I'm gonna keep it clean. I'm gonna keep it clean. Stop um, bashing women. I'm a, exactly. no, no, look, look, I was it's raised a man out I was there. raised by a good woman. Yes. Okay? And absolutely. I was raised by a great grandma. Yeah. So one thing I'll never do is disrespect a woman. Right. Okay, and um my thing is like I said, I just want women to be more happy, just make realize that Men do have flaws. We're not perfect. Okay, we both need each other. Cause like I said, 
It's funny because I hear my partners call on the phone, they fuss about their girl, but as soon as the phone click in, oh, I gotta call you back, that's up. So we <laughs> realize that y'all gonna have y'all folks and we love y'all. Mm -hmm. But I think it's more women out there that have the same attitude we have that stop looking for what he got, but what he exactly. can give you. Right. Exactly. Okay, so I appreciate y'all truth be told. We're gonna be right back with the king himself, the Mary Maretta, Mr. King Malo. King Malo. See y'all when we get back. <laughs> be told I'm it's my honor to introduce my next guest um, everybody knows him as the aka mayor of Marietta Mr. Malo how you doing Mr. Malo? Doing great. Mr. Malo. How you doing sir? How you doing now? Good how are you? It's a pleasure to see you all with nice people today. All right what we're gonna do basically is we're gonna get a look pers uh, closer and personal Mr. Malo um, and okay. I understand you have the first question. Yep first what I want to do is congratulate you on your engagement I heard you are engaged now Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. You're going to have to say more than yes, 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 yes. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Look at that yes, smile. Yes, now, this is a happy man, okay? Yes, yes. I'm engaged. Yes, I am. Got my nice lady and found me um, something real solid. Put on my team. You know, I've been having fun lately, you know. So I figure, you know, it's about that time for me to go and just slow my roll a little bit. For one thing, girl, they'll bust my head. Yeah, I love black love. Look at that. <laughs> That's black love. That's a smile of black love. <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and jump into questions. I want you just to tell the viewers a little bit. Tell them a little bit about um, King Milo. King Milo, you know. King Milo, you know, um, Marietta homegrown, you know. Good old, good old country, Marietta boy. I like to have fun, do good things for my community, you know. Some people say I'm loud spoken, you know, I got a hard go. Yeah, but as a businessman, sometimes you have to be, right? I totally agree. Okay, so tell us a little bit about um, the, the businesses that you have right now, your your different establishments, and how okay. did they come about? Okay, well, you know, as everybody know, you know, um, I just celebrated the 30th anniversary of Milo's Born Lounge. You know, um, it was something I hopped off into after working 10 years for NASCAR. I worked for NASCAR for 10 years, you know, I was a manager there. And, um, after working there for 10 years, putting up a whole bunch of money in my 401k, a whole bunch of money in stocks and bonds with NASCAR. Mm -hmm. After I figured out the 10 years, it was time for me to, um, I want to sign my own check. Well, and that's good, because you're signing your own checks. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so I want to know, did you have any questions? Yeah, I got a couple. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, 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 I'm deep with them. I have a lot, know, but. Okay. I'm, a, I'm deep with them, but uh, the world, some that may not know them, um, I've been knowing you for a while. And like you say, a harder go. Does it ever get to the point that you feel like you gotta say no sometimes? Yeah, you know, um, sometimes you have to, man. You know, it, it's hard at times. Pretty much, it, it depends on situations. You know, when you're out here, you know, you find a hood, you know, and then you're out here in your own backyard. So you know, pretty much everyone. So you know, a lot of different things come to me. You know, but um. Every now and then, you know, you have to, you know, that, that that's only being felt because especially as a businessman, if I help everybody, you know broke. what I'm saying, I'm, I'm going to be broke yes. and a lot of people really don't want your assistance, but they don't need your assistance, they just want it for the hell of it. Yeah. Wow. So how do you get rid of those people or, or shave the fat, I like to call it that, those people that really are just takers, how do you get them out of your circle or, you know, no longer deal with them or have dealings? You know what? I got me a special way of dealing with people like that. Uh-oh. You know, um, a lot of times, somebody might come to me for something when I know you ain't going to pay me back. Mm -hmm. I did to you anyway. I did to you. You come to me, you need to buy two, three hundred dollars you behind on the bill. I give it to you, hoping that you pay me back, but if you don't pay me back, I don't care. Right, because that com that's coming from your heart. You're it's, giving it, that's all. It's awesome. coming from my heart, and then, while you're not paying me back, I'm just missing you on my life. Oh, right, right, you right, know? right, right. And normally when people owe you, they, they find their own way out of your life because they don't want to pay you back, so. I agree. Yeah, good. And at the same time, you know, when they think they, they're getting down on me, they ain't doing nothing. Right, right, right. So I have some another question for you. Tell me about some of the ups and downs that you've experienced as a as a businessman. You know, um, as a businessman, you know, spend like in the business I'm in right now, for us bar and lounge and doing the club and thing. You know, um, it's all about it's all about promoting yourself. Okay. You got to promote yourself because I remember when I first started here, 
when nobody here but me and the DJ. We looking at each other crazy. <laughs> so you know, um, I never gave up. I never gave up. I stayed focused and um, you know, at the same time not giving up, man. I ran to good people such as, you know, DJ Hershey for Hot 1079, DJ Jelly V103, you know, different people such as that right there. And um never right done gave me an opportunity to just, you know, rub elbows with some more good people. Okay, sounds good. Well we're gonna come back with some more questions from King Milo, so make sure you stay tuned and don't forget to vote. Disco right here, and we have our special guest, King Milo. So we're gonna finish off with our questions, our many, many questions. So Coach Disco, I heard you had a question. Yeah, you know, I heard a little. Um, it got me last week. I heard somebody saying, uh, if something happened before they call Red Cross, they call him King Milo. What I'm getting at is, do you think people want to be close to you? Because do you think you have so many friends if you want so successful? Or uh, you know, you know what I'm trying to get at? It's because a lot of times money, success brings unwanted friends. You know, how many genuine friends do you feel like you got out there? Um, really, I don't know. I really, I'm talking about, I don't know, man. You know, the game's so shady, man. You know, the game's so shady, man. You know, you got pretty much just, you know, me being in front of the hood, you know. Mm -hmm. Me in front of the hood, so, you know, I pretty much, I expect the unexpected about the people. Yeah. yeah. You know, but still, I get everybody the opportunity. Once you cross that line, then, it's right. hey, yeah. you're right. Yeah, it's a wrap. Okay. I, I, I hate to, I mean, that's this is your interview, but I, I, I feel the same way. Well, okay. Um, I wanted to know, as far as your business today, if you can reverse 10 years, what would you have done? And I know you said you worked for NASCAR for about 10 years of your life, so I'm going to equate that to however many years past the last maybe 15 years or five years that you've been doing your own thing as far as business. But if you can reverse... 10 years of your life in business, what would you do different? I would focus more on my education. Okay. That's I would good. focus, I would focus, I would focus really, um, you know, focus more on education. I'm real big on education. As I got older, you know, so, you know, that's why I do a lot of different events dealing with the youth. Because, you know, education is very, very key. I yes. would pay more attention. Instead of going to school, being a class clown, I will, I will probably sit at the front of this. I'm gonna sit, let me sit at the front. I'm gonna sit about the front. Let me pay more attention to the teacher. I'm gonna take more notes and start in the back. Yeah. Jonah, spitting spitballs. I would have been more focused 
on my education. Wow, and that says it all because, of course, education is so key if you're going to have a successful life. And not to say that you can't go back and get that education because they have so many programs that's available today where you can. You can get your GED. If you want to go to school, you, you know, college, past that, you can get an associate. They have technical schools. So that's, that's awesome. That's definitely awesome. Most people say, well, you know, I would have done my business this way or that way, but not looking at the, the foundation, which is your education to help you get where you need to be. And obviously, although, you know, you, I'm not going to say a mistake, but you made the decision you made as far as school, but for you, it kind of worked because you're still a businessman and a successful businessman to this very day. I agree. So that's awesome. So I, I, would I be safe to say, how, how we say it, game recognized game, well, I mean, you took your street hustle and became a businessman with that same hustle. Absolutely right. That's what I'm you know, absolutely right. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I done done it all, you yeah. know. Yeah. I was a hustler, you know. I'm a natural born hustler, so, you know, the push ever came to show up now, hey, <laughs> I got a plan B. You know, right. I choose not to deal with plan B. Yeah. Yeah. But the same way I used to hustle as a kid, I took that same old hustling mentality off to business. Exactly. And that's one reason why, you know, I'm very successful because I go over and beyond. I, I'm not trying to just be, I'm not trying to be hood rich. I want to be rich for real. Right, right, right. You know, I, that you know, lasting money. Absolutely right. right. You know, I tell a lot of my friends, you know, um, you know, I got one common goal. I want to be the Jay-Z or Mary Young. Okay. That's a good, because he's definitely doing so, his thing. You know, definitely. Um, that, that's what it is. So I'm letting y'all know I'm not content with where I'm at. I want to have so many zeros, I can go to sleep and wake up and count and got to count some more. <laughs> well, you heard it. <laughs> Truth be told. Well, I appreciate I appreciate you coming by, joining us. Uh, yes. Miss Nikki is always wonderful to see you. Thank you. Uh, next week, it's going to be a subject that maybe me and Mr. Mullen can touch a little bit. But you being from a football family, you understand that it is about semi-pro, the truth and the lies of semi-pro football. Hey, you heard. See it. you next week. <laughs> We out of here. We're out. Ooh.